Well, yesterday, Health Secretary Matt Hancock announced that uh, we must all wear face coverings in shops and supermarkets in England from the 24th of July, already happening in Scotland, of course. He joins me now. Good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you Good so morning. much. How are you? Let's, um, let's talk about masks. Let's talk about masks. Um, there's been lots of accusations about dithering and lack of clarity. A lot of our viewers are really confused. They're confused, first of all, about why it took so long and why you're waiting until next week to implement this. Oh, well, the, um, uh, the implementation is to give 10 days for businesses to get things uh, organised. But the advice uh, from now ha and has been for some time that we recommend wearing a uh, a, a mask in shops uh, and we're going to make it mandatory uh, from the 24th of July onwards. I think that gives people the clarity that they've been seeking. OK, but we don't need that amount of time to know how to put a mask on. I think we know how to do that. Um, I wonder, though, you were saying that if shop... Because there's a problem, isn't there? If shop owners find that people are coming in and they're not wearing masks, they're going to have that difficulty in telling them that they've got to do that. And you were saying that they can call the police, but surely the police are overstretched as it right now anyway. They, they're not going to be able to do that. It's not workable, surely. Oh, no, no, no. It's very much workable. And the main reason is that the vast majority of people obey the law. Uh, and we've seen that throughout the lockdown. You know, at the peak of this... Uh, we saw uh, that uh, we had mandatory rules in place. Uh, compared to other countries, we issued hardly any fines and because we didn't need to, because people follow the law around. You know, in this country, people do. It's yeah, good. They have. That, no, that's... you're right. You're right. They, they have indeed. They, they have, absolutely. Um, as more people are going back to work, we know that people are slowly, slowly getting back to work. Will we see in the future, perhaps, you know, people having to wear masks maybe in the office if it's needed in shops? What about, and generally, what about public spaces too? Is this going to be something that we're just going to have to live with now? It's going to be the new normal? Well, it, it, in shops, it is in the same way that in public transport. Um, in, um, it, it, uh, in, in offices, I don't expect that. But the reason is that where a mask can be useful is where you're seeing somebody for a short to medium period of time. If you're in the same room as them for the for all day, uh, like whether in an office together or, for instance, um, teachers in schools, um, then we don't think that masks make much difference because you're 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 you know you're 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 in the same space with those with with the same people. Whereas on public transport uh, in shops, uh, you're seeing different people. Uh, and, uh, and, and for relatively short periods of time, and so the mask can help. So that's why the rules are as they are, really, really clear uh, that they'll be mandatory in, in shops, including in supermarkets. They're already mandatory on public transport, and they're mandatory in the NHS. You were saying, you said yesterday, you wanted to give people more confidence, you know, and able to, yeah. so that they can shop safely and obviously protect shop workers. That's terribly important. Yeah. But to yeah. feel confident, you have to have trust. And would you accept that over this time, trust has eroded? And that's because of lack of clarity. That's because senior figures, we know what happened with Dominic Cummings and others, they flouted the law. I know you're shaking your head, but it's true. They flouted the law. They did. They didn't just bend it. They smashed it to smithereens. And a lot of people, we saw what happened, people thought, well, if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. And I think in some ways you're quite lucky that the country have actually been so compliant, if you like. No, it's really interesting because we didn't see that uh, response to some of those media stories. Um, we, we've seen fantastic compliance with the rules that have been needed by, by people across this country. And, um, and, and that's terrific. And I know that there were lots of questions about uh, compliance with the rules, um, but actually people have been really, really brilliant at, at following them. And, and that's for good reason, right? Because it's in all of our interests to control this virus and to get it right down. And, and, um, and as the science has learned more about the virus, so we've updated the rules and people, I think, totally understand that this was a virus nobody knew anything about six months ago. And the scientists have been painstakingly working to understand it more. And so, of course, we've uh, updated the rules and the guidance as we've learned more about the virus, uh, as you'd ex expect us to. And, and people have been absolutely brilliant at following those rules. I expect to see exactly the same in shops uh, in the same way that we have on public transport. Um, of course, that enforcement is available in the same way that uh, shopkeepers can 
uh, can call the police for other matters. Uh, but I, I just expect the the public to be very sensible about this because we've we've all we're all on the same side in the battle against the virus. We absolutely are. You're right in that. We absolutely are. We've seen Leicester in lockdown in Blackburn. There's going to be a bit of clamping down. There's been all these little areas that again, um, it's it's there is a concern that maybe we're moving too quickly. You know, the number of deaths is still high. You know, it's compared with what it was, but it's still it's still incredibly high in England. Um, are you? Can you tell us that you're better prepared now? Should there be what everyone fears a second wave? Well, uh, over the whole of the UK, the number of deaths is now lower than it is uh, normally at this time of year, uh, which is good news. Sure. And uh, we've taken that action to move from a uh, full-blown national lockdown to more and more local action. Uh, that, was, that is the plan. So obviously very significant action in Leicester. I really welcome uh, the action that councils are taking in other parts of the country. You mentioned Blackburn just then. Um, and also the individual specific action in, for instance, we saw in Herefordshire with one particular farm, yeah. or, or we've seen in, in other individual uh, areas. So this, this, the plan is that we have more of this local action and less of a national lockdown. Uh, and we and, and that allows people to, you know, restore some of the things that make life worth living and um, and some of the things that we love to do whilst also keeping uh, control of the virus. So that's the plan uh, overall. The plan is working. We've got to make sure we stick at it. You know, we all need the resolve to stick at it and stick by the social distancing rules. And really important not to forget the basics, like washing your hands more often than you normally would which is still the number one way that you can help to protect yourself from the virus. No, you can't state that often enough. You're absolutely right. It's something our Dr Hillary is always talking about to make sure that people do it and you don't become complacent. That would be the worst thing. Surely, though, in light, and I don't need to tell you about the amazing sacrifices and the amazing work that's been done by the NHS, but the right thing to do at this time would be to introduce free car parking because that has become a huge issue um, with people just trying to get to their jobs and trying to do their incredible work. Can you guarantee that already. that's going to happen? I've done it already. I know, there is but free is it going to parking. continue? You've done it for the short term. Is this going to be for the long term? Is this going to be something that that will happen forever? We've done it for the uh, for the uh, period of the crisis because the number of visitors is right down. Uh, but you know, the, the, you, there aren't enough car parking spaces to go round between visitors and staff, and so we're building more car parks uh, will around. Be free, hospital, though, will those car uh, parks be free to the people that work in the NHS? Uh, well, they are right now, and yeah, they that's... Yeah, right now, you know, but well, that can, that's what I'm saying to you. Is that going to continue when hopefully we are out of this? I mean, it'd be the very least that we could do for the NHS workers. Well, the challenge is that the, there's also demands for free uh, parking for uh, patients and visitors, and you can't have the same car parking space used twice. So the reason that I'm, uh, you know, the, we got the policy that we have is now, whilst there's very few visitors in the NHS, we're able to make it free... Uh, for staff, um, and at the same time, we're building car parking uh, capacity uh, to make sure that we can we can have more available for everybody. Uh, look, I understand how important this issue is to people. I get that, and uh, so we're working very hard on it. You also said that, as far as it goes with funerals, because we know how tough that has been for people, as if things weren't bad enough. Uh, people yeah. weren't allowed to mourn properly. They weren't allowed to say goodbye properly. And you did admit that you'd made you'd made a mistake. I mean, is there anything yeah. you want to say to anyone who who went through that horror um, and they weren't able to grieve properly? Yes, I, my heart goes out to you. Uh, the um, you know, it was not the intention to stop very close family members going to uh, funerals. That is how the uh, the guidance was uh, interpreted, and I, I saw some absolutely heartrending cases. I mean, it was just awful stories of people who'd been married for 50, 60 years and then not going to their spouse's funeral. Uh, the the one that really affected me was a um, a funeral of a little thirteen year old boy. Uh, from South London and his parents didn't attend because they thought the rules were that you shouldn't attend. Uh, that obviously meant that we hadn't written that guidance as clearly as we should have done. And we we then, you know, I saw that and I uh, changed it. And, um, uh, and my heart goes out to everybody involved. 
Well, look, as well as being Health Secretary, you're also a husband, dad of three, um, and I just wondered if the kids are back at school and what life is like for you, because you had COVID, yeah. of course. You know, you, you went yeah. through that yourself. How, how are things in your family? Well, I've had a haircut since that photo. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, um, it, it's, t it's tough. Um, you know, the, the, my kids, uh, my eldest is 13. Um, my, uh, the little one who's seven has gone back to school. Oh, we've frozen for a minute. I'm sure hopefully we will get um, the health secretary back. So I've got so much that I want to ask him. Now we've got Matt Hancock back. We were rudely interrupted, weren't we? You froze and you're back, for goodness sake. And you've got I, the Queen I'm behind so you, haven't you? You've got the, a picture of the Queen behind you. You would have enjoyed that. I love the Queen. Uh, I can I, tell. Uh, here she is. <laughs> I can tell. Yeah. Now look, you might think that this question is trivial. Um, it might not be your area of expertise, but honestly, the amount of our viewers that have got in touch with us all confused um, and, and again, just wanting clarity about beauty salons because yeah. a man can go and get his beard done, you know, and, and that's close, you know, you have to sort of do all of that, can go to a barber's, get his beard done. Women cannot get treatments done in beauty salons that involve things, you know, things like facials, eyebrows, all of that. Are we going to get some sort of clarity pretty soon as to what everybody can do? Well, uh, the rules have been set out. I mean, they were designed that way because um, a beard trim is, in, is uh, quick and is essentially defined as part of a haircut. Uh, and um, so I, I know that in all these rules we've had to bring in, they all have border issues around the boundaries that have been complicated and people will have wrestled with all the way through. You know, there's, an, there's an, another one about the uh, face masks in shops. People asked me this morning, well, what about in a shop like Pret, where you sometimes eat in and sometimes get takeaway? And the answer is, it's only, uh, the face mask is needed if you go to the counter, if you have table service, because you can't have, um, you don't go to the counter for, uh, for in, a, in a restaurant under the rules. You have to have table service. If you have table service, then you don't need to have the face mask because you're not going up uh, to the counter. So there are these boundary issues, and sure. I totally understand why people want clarity on each and every one of them. Uh, and um, it, 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 is, uh, it is inevitably more complicated than the original just stay at home message. But people also you know, can use their common sense around uh, around where the boundaries lie. So in that case, in the case, specific question you asked, there's a reason for it. Uh, I, I know that some people have raised issues with that that particular boundary, but but that's the reason that the decision was made that way. OK, I understand. It was interesting you mentioned Pret, because your pal Michael Gove was in there buying something and he didn't have a face mask on, but from now on he will. Well, that was before I made yeah. the announcement, so um, now, now the rules have changed. I wonder how you're all feeling about the inevitable inquiry that there's going to be into all of this. And there's been some accusations that decisions are being made right now with one eye on people perhaps covering their backsides as to when that might come out. Can you say categorically that is not the case? Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't even... I, what I think about is what is the best way to tackle this virus with the least damage to society, to the economy... Um, and but keeping people safe, and that is all that matters. And and my view anyway is that um, any um, discussion afterwards is all going to be about the substance anyway. So the best thing you can do is get up in the morning, make the best decisions you possibly can on the evidence, the information that you've got available, uh, constantly looking for new sources of information, new scientific uh, inquiry, um, and uh, and making the best calls that you can. I think that's the only way that you can go through a, a, a crisis like this as health secretary. It's the only thing that matters is sorting the problems. And, you know, the challenges are so big that um, all of the, you know, all of the tittle tattle, frankly, it doesn't matter. What matters is trying to get the big calls as, 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 uh, as good as you possibly can make them. Just before we let you go, one last question. President Trump in the past hour has been taking credit for the UK decision to ban Huawei from 5G network in the UK. So is President Trump now, is he in charge? Is he sort of like dictating UK government policy as he seems to be saying that he is? Uh, no. Um, <laughs> this is a technical decision based on the back of advice from the National Cyber Security Centre. Uh, uh, the Culture Secretary set it out in the Commons yesterday, I think with great 
uh, clarity and it means that we can have high quality mobile phone coverage that is secure long into the future. I think it was a very wise, balanced decision based on that technical advice. Matt Hancock, thank you for coming and talking to us. We, we really do appreciate it. Thank you so, so much. And you know what? The guys at GMB are very nice. You could talk to them too. <laughs> I love ITV. It's <laughs> great to join, great to, uh, join you and, uh, uh, and be able to chat. I'm really sorry about the technical problems. Oh, don't worry. But we've all, got used to, we've all got used to the odd break we in have, a Zoom call. We have. We absolutely have. Thank you very much indeed. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.